out of acting planning board at the uh, meeting on March 18th, uh, 2021 at 6 p.m. Uh, we need approval of minutes from February 18th and then March 4th, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of February 18th to March 24th. Chairman, can I just uh, say that there's uh, one typo I think we need to address. Um, I think you want to add my last name under on page two under Dennis's um, application. This says John moved. I think it should say John Qua. I'll second the motion also. <coughs> Yeah. And Mike Demer. Uh Robert and Ann Ann are 152 10th Street and uh, uh, Lot 21 and then uh, 125 10th Street and Map 147 Lot 20. Good afternoon. We are we have both received both of these applications. I've reviewed the the, the sites relatively thoroughly and, and came to the determination that the road tenth section of 10th Street that abuts each and each of your properties um, is in pretty significant need of improvement. It's difficult for emergency response vehicles to get up there. Um, and with that being said, if you uh, folks would agree to agree to have some reconstruction done on the road, that would exempt the portion of that property or, or material being moved around for reconstruction. That would exempt that portion in the shoreland zone. And with that being said, you would have the ability to, to move or relocate up to 10,000 yards outside of the shoreland zone, which I believe that's the rural zone there. Um, that, that would be the only reason why these applications should actually be heard would be for the mineral extraction or the movement of gravel and or it within the shoreland zone. That line has been within question here for a couple of weeks and I, I think that if you folks would gear that project more towards, I think that may have been the intent at the beginning, but um, to gear that project towards rebuilding that short section of road a couple hundred feet. That hill, as you folks are very well aware of, is in excess of 26% grade. And our ordinance asks that roads in the shoreland zone be no greater than 10%. So if you, I, I don't think that, I think we can resolve this issue without going through the entire planning board process and take this, it would be just a simple road construction in the shoreland zone with minimal impact to the lake, if any. Is that, I don't know if you folks have reviewed the package or I'd be happy to go over it more in depth if anybody has any questions. And, ma and maybe while folks are doing that, this is Ben Smith, the uh, the planner. Um, it, it really is a, a code officer determination. I, I think this was placed on the agenda uh, because of uh, mineral extraction, earth moving activities within the shoreland zone. And, and again, based on uh, Mike's site visit and review of the application, the determination is really that it, it's for activities that are not conditional uses. They're, they're not uses that would require planning board approval. So there's really no action for the board to take on these. These are gonna become uh, code officer administrative activities where they'll be pulling building permits and 
soil and erosion permits and those kinds of things uh, through the code office. Um, if there's questions about that, 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 that could be appropriate, but there's really no formal action that the board would be asked to take at, at this point on the application if, if the applications are going to be removed. Yeah, maybe we could pull, do you have one of these um, images of the site you could pull up for us on the big screen, or I could just use this uh, packet. Which one do you want? The overview? Yep, the overview. There we go, that one's fine. It has the 250 foot line. Um, I think my biggest concern is that it certainly looks to me like more than 500 yards of material have been disrupted and moved within the shoreland zone and that that does require a conditional use permit from the planning board. Um, and I'm not sure, you know, who's to make the determination. All I have is this image here, which is probably insufficient to determine that. Um, but I think the planning board needs to decide if, you know, they, sh you know, we should go through the conditional use process or not. Um, and that's one of the, one of the things we need to discuss is how many yards of material have been moved in the shoreline zone. And the packet itself um, indicates that 3,400 yards are going to be moved in the shoreline zone. So that's certainly more than 500. Um, so I feel like we probably need to get some more information here. Um, I'd like to get a, a topo map of the site because, once again, aerial photograph, it's hard to see exactly what's going on there. And um, I just want to point out, too, that, oh, there we go. That's a good one. Either one of those shows future area to be disrupted, which is also in the shoreland zone. Um, and it looks like it could be approaching the 100 foot line, but I, once again, that's, I don't think the 100 foot line is on any of these maps. It's not, but that's, it's not near, it. the house is on the 100 foot line, halfway in the, into the house is the 100 foot line. Um, Can you just indicate quickly for everyone where the house is on this, or maybe the previous one of those maps? Sure. <laughs> Okay, you get a bigger budget, we'll get two of these something. Awesome. Oh, I'll take you. Uh, so this area right here is my garage, where the garage starts, so the house is here. Uh, yeah. And the 100 foot line is approximately in here. Okay. Uh, so everything is past the 100 foot line. Um, okay. Well, that was one question, but we still need to get that probably on the topo map. So it's great to get the 100 foot line in the 250 foot line on there this so we can really see what's going on mr chairman and this does not really show what where 10th street is um can you go back up to yeah, the the drawing um one more uh one more okay so this is where 10th street is right so it comes up here and into this area so this whole area is what's being improved uh, to, and, and that's what's going to require that excavation down, right? So obviously this, this hill on that side, you know, we're getting closer to the shoreline. So what we would like to do is come this way with it, right? And reduce this area down where the existing driveway is now, right? And, and make this portion of the road in accordance with the requirements for 10th Street. So that's the, that's the area that we're talking about being Thank affected Thank you. Uh, with the slope. So then, at, when we're done, it's just this, this little triangle here that would be excavated for that 500 yard Requirement. Mr. Chairman, I believe, um, Gavin, where I arrived at this, at this decision is section 5.9. 
I'm sorry, excuse me, 5.7 roads and driveways in the Shoreland District. Yeah. Um, the reconstruction of, of roads, which is what this section needs. Mr. Sabelli, can I see that please? The grade is, as I said before, in excess of 20, 26 degrees between here and here at the top of this hill. And that's like 350 feet. The, the, the affected area of excavation currently is down here. Now, if they are going to rebuild this portion of road to bring it to current, to bring it to current um, compliance with the ordinance, this is exempt from extraction because it's road construction and maintenance in the Shoreland Zone, per the Act and Ordinance, Section 5-7. And then... Well, you would think they would still need a conditional use permit even if they were allowed to do it. Well, it I'd love it if you went back to one of the images that kind of shows how the site looks now. But I have a couple questions about unfortunately that doesn't state in, that in an image like this. Unfortunately that doesn't state that in our ordinance. Um, if you go to section five five point nine yeah, I'm there. which references which references in incidental construction alteration repair and building. Five point eight. Sorry. Five point no, no, nine. Yeah. Yeah. B. Article one. It references the incidental that is also exempt. And Mr. Sabelli, in this larger portion up here, they were talking about the effect of the big pie area. The intent. We don't have an existing application, but in speaking with Mr. Sabelli, is he'll be back here. I'm sure to to um, review an application for a garage, for another accessory building. So the second portion of the excavation would be incidental to that construction. So that also makes it exempt. Um, I did have a, not, while, while we're looking at 5.9, I did have another question in that um, under performance standards I'm on page 53 of 100 me. Mm -hmm. Performance standards number one, um, no part of any extraction operation shall be permitted within 100 feet of any property or street line, except the drainage ways to reduce runoff or from the extraction area may be allowed up to 50 feet from such line. Natural vegetation shall be left and maintained on the undisturbed land. So and I'm a little bit confused about the how we're supposed to view two lots of different ownership and one operation. Do you have any just quick insight on that? Sure. Like, um, this, this all goes to the point of extraction versus earth moving. Yep. Extraction is an industrial extractive industry. Uh, what we're doing is, is on a house lot. It's referred to as earth moving. That's kind of, Correct. just wanted to make that distinction. In my point, Gavin, would be to improve this section of road. If this section of road that is currently you, it's very difficult to get a EMS, EMS up in there. And Mr. Zabelli is the dead end on, on this road. He's the last house on the road. That road has not been improved. The grade on the road is, is very, very steep in this section. If that can be improved along with provisions made for erosion, I, th I think it's it's probably in the best intent. Can we do a site review? I, I was wondering about, um, does that also fall into another zone in that area as well? Um, aquifer protection? Yeah. Yes. So how do the rules apply to that? There are very few.
the aquifer protection zone. Got page 44. Isn't isn't a, isn't very restrictive outside of it's outside of the outside of polluting or anything being dumped or any any contaminants put into the soil. It's not very descriptive in comparison to like the shoreland zone or. So I was thinking about the chart. Where's the chart? Um, the land use chart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That applies to that. Uh, page 18, 17. It's the same as the road. This is a chart they won't buy. Other uses, page 16. Filling, grading, other earth moving activities. This is a transition zone. Yeah. And that's kind of that's how I came to a conditional so use for more than 500 yards in the yeah. shoreline zone. Was Something short correct. Short 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 short. Right. So what does R stand for? That the R's restricted. I don't. Su but I'm not suggesting it's that we don't the road. I'm suggesting that we do. You know, have to go through the for road construction. Road. And that's I guess that's up to the board. Yeah. What's that? The the other the land use chart I would 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 go under other earth moving activity the, what we're what we're applying for, you know what we're trying to accomplish is the the road the garage and the driveway um, which has those exemptions the other would be anything other than that so yeah, included in in your packets, um, I I had included a memo uh, dated March fourth that raised a number of of questions uh, based on a conditional use and based on uh, a presumption that these activities are filling, grading, and earth moving activities. Um, the application, the conditional use application submitted by the applicants seem to be um, indicative of that kind of use. And certainly the land use table and, and the kinds of comments that, that uh, the planning board members are bringing up related to the quantity of material, the amount of material that's being removed or moved around a site is very limited in the shoreland zone. It's it's much less restrictive when you're outside that zone. Part of my comments were, number one, where exactly is that shoreland zone boundary? Uh, number two, it had to do with how much disturbance has occurred so far and, and how much uh, was gonna be required to do uh, the work in the road and uh, site preparation activities for the garage on the other property. And, we're, and we are really talking about both of these applications at the same time. They're, they're two for two abutting properties, but in my description here, uh, I'll talk about them both together and then we can talk about them individually if we need to. Um, and on page three of the uh, Demers application, it, it does compare, as you had noted, uh, you know, different quantities of filling, grading, and earth moving depending on which zone you're in. So besides the basic questions of where's the shoreland zone and uh, other, you know, is this even a permitted use? Is this a, something that you can even do at all in, in where they're talking about it? So these were questions that, that I had um, in discussions with the code officer. Uh, it's really the code officer's determination as to how these uses are classified. So whether it's mineral extraction or whether it's filling and moving and grading or whether it's something else, uh, is, it comes through the code offices. And um, what Mike had said at the beginning of the meeting is that much of the work uh, associated with the Demers application is with road reconstruction, which uh, earth moving activities associated with road reconstruction wouldn't count towards some of these threshold numbers that, that we just went through. And with the Sibeli application, if it's associated with the construction of 
an additional accessory building, the garage that's, that's mentioned in the application, then that site work would be exempt from these uh, thresholds that we're talking about. So if, if that's how they're, they're classified and that's, that's pretty much what, what Mike was saying at the beginning of the meeting, um, that activity is allowed with code permits having to meet the existing road standards. It's a, you know, it have to meet the soil and erosion control uh, standards in the ordinance. The site would have to be stabilized and meet the, all of the requirements that, that the code office is gonna be putting in place for those things. But there, it wouldn't be a board decision uh, tonight about is this a conditional use or not? Does the board need to review it or not? Or does the board need to uh, make findings of fact on a conditional use at all. So I, I think that's a long-winded way of, of kind of c coming back to the original point that Mike w was making, then saying that these applications for conditional use are, are withdrawn by the applicants because they are not anything that the board could act on. They are administrative code officer activities that would go through the code office. If I may. Mr. Chairman, um, past practice has been, and I haven't been on the board as long as Gavin by any means, but past practice has been, um, with me, the only thing that we heard was what the CEO said we had to come before us. And what I'm hearing, if I'm right, the CEO was saying this doesn't need to come before us. That it's under his jurisdiction, and um, and I'm going to trust the CEO if he says that something doesn't need to come before us, then it doesn't need to come before us. That's just my opinion. I, I agree with that 100%. <coughs> So you want a motion on this, or you just want to just drop it, or don't you need a motion, Mike? We don't. We don't need a motion. We just need okay. not, we'll just ask to move dismiss so the, this is the just application. Courtesy that you're telling us this, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. The the items uh, do appear on the agenda this evening, and the applicants had submitted those applications, so it it's it's appropriate to have this explanation uh, rather than just pretend that there wasn't an application and it wasn't on the agenda, but essentially these these have become administrative items rather than board items. And the way the process works, is my understanding, if somebody out there disagrees with what the CEO was doing or not doing or whatever, um, they can all also do an administrative appeal uh, on the code of enforcement officer. Uh, and let the zone board of appeals make that determination whether he was right or whether he was wrong. Yeah. That's how the process works. <coughs> Historically. Thank you. Moving on. Well, Thank I must you. say that um, what I go by is the land use chart, and these these pamphlets were presented to me um, as a conditional use permit. I spent several hours looking at them. Um, I feel like this does warrant a conditional use permit, which wouldn't stop the project in any way. It wouldn't, I don't see how it would be a detriment to the project. Um, the biggest benefit to the board would be that you would get some help from us with your reclama re reclamation and revegetation plan, which does need some sprucing up, I must say. Um, I did put one together that I could share with you, but I really think that um, maybe the rest of the board members should um, at least voice their opinions because I, I, from what I've seen, there's more than 500 yards of, um, of disturbance in the shoreland zone and that going through the conditional use permit isn't a detriment to anyone it allows us to, you know, put in place other safeguards to help with the project because it does look a little bit larger than just the two items discussed, the road and the garage. And um, 
and I'd love to do a site walk out there, the photos that were presented in the pamphlets um, made it look like a fairly large project. And without a topo map, it, it is very hard to, you know, I'd love to see a topo before the project and then proposed afterwards so we can really see the difference, how much soil is disappearing or being moved and in the shoreland zone, like, I feel like we might be going a little too quickly over this. And that's, that's my opinion. Um, I do have some ideas for your reclamation plan. Um, do you want me to go back to the survey keep, now? No, 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 keep going. Keep going down. No, the other way, yeah. I feel like if we did a conditional use permit, we would be able to put a reclamation Plan into going, effect that going, um, going, beneficial to the town. But um, so that, 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 well, back up, back up. Thanks. Well, the engineer's assessment. Yeah. Well, I like that one. Scroll up a little bit. Yeah. Can you scroll up to the next picture there? Since you're on that one, I did want to point out that um, if you also look at your engineer's assessment, uh, I forget which packet it's in. Here eventually. Here we go. The last bullet item is overall stormwater runoff will be contained within the pit area. Um, makes it sound like a, a bigger project. Um, so this area right here is where all the drainage goes right now. So that that's a depression there that. Uh, even in the floods of 2006, that did not have any water in it. And all of the slope from this hill and this hill came down into that area. And that contained all of the runoff. I just felt like the terminology of the professional engineer's assessment um, was indicative of a, a more like a mineral extraction project, but um, I'm fine with viewing it as a filling, grading, earth moving activity. And I guess that's our point, Gavin, is that it is a private driveway, private road. Um, improving these are our rights to do. Um, it is under 592B exempt from planning board um, and conditional use, meaning it shall be allowed without a conditional use permit from the planning board. It, it, it couldn't be any more clear in my mind that these activities that we're doing the, on, on my property, the driveway, on, on Bob's, the, the garage and the road, um, that, that this is incidental to those, to those ends. Um, you know, the ordinance describes permitting authorities for different for different uses. This is where the ordinance specifically points out that the planning board doesn't have jurisdiction over this. Um, my so driveway- I'm saying in those two instances of the road and mm -hmm. the lot, but and um, without seeing those, sep you know, if you broke those down in separate projects and showed us the amount of soil you were moving for those, and then it, I just feel like what we're looking at is bigger than those two projects, but I could also use more information in order to make that determination. Would you defer to the code enforcement officer to the site? Well, it's, it's for the board to, I really feel like it's for the board to decide if, it, if it's a conditional use permit or not, and it's not, it wouldn't really be a, I don't see how it's a detriment. I, I, I think that's... It's, it's the role of the code officer to make a determination on use, and if that use requires 
uh, site plan or conditional use review, then it's uh, the board's job at that point to look at all the standards and requirements associated with that. But there are a number of things that are reserved for the code officer to do uh, through that office and, and based on the determination that the, has been made, um, you know, the, these items are exempt from conditional use review. I guess that's kind of what we were discussing was, is there any excess Question. work going on outside these two items in this location? And I feel like there has been more than 500 yards of material disturbed in the shoreland zone and it warrants a conditional use permit. Um, which I don't see how that really slows anything down. We have a question. Yeah. Yes, it's Scott McLeod, Asheville Construction. Uh, I'm not here for this project, however, I did play a role in building the house in that project over there. And I want to speak my point of what I see over there and what I experienced over there. I did have a worker slip and fall and get hurt over there. Sibelis don't even know this. Ambulance came to the site. I brought the worker down the driveway because they couldn't make it up that hill. Now also known the topography of that land and what I see they want to do, there's no way that you can drop that hill and keep it at 500 yards. The only way that work can happen is to work the site is what's being asked and it's better for everybody. EMS can't get up there. I know. Thank you. So UPS can't get up there. That's my point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Chairman, yes. unless there's some objection, uh, I would like to make a motion that we leave, put it back to the CEO where it belongs and uh, we move on. I'll second that. All in favor? Um, I was wondering if you would uh, permit me to read what I have for their... Um, Re reclamation? Yeah, I mean, I... Honestly, what's in the packet is, I don't know. You put a lot of work into this. Well, I mean, this is what, this is our job as volunteers when we're presented with the applicants to go over it. And honestly, this is what I came up with. Um, and I already expressed my opinion about most of it. Um, but I do find that the reclamation plan provided could be assisted which um there's a couple of them that kind of look like this one of them looks like this there's a bigger one too um but of course i mean i can i can read it but i don't know how you know we're going to proceed exactly without mr chairman Mr. Chairman, if, if, you, if you'd like to give that to me, because we can certainly sit down and work over the, what we're going to require for, a sediment, for the sediment erosion control and, and their revegetation plan when this, when, this comes to the, when this comes to a head, when it's time to look at those facets of, the, of this project. Yeah, well, it's, I felt like it was one of the first things we needed to do um, because it, we can't say it was a conditional use permit, which we need to have um, a reclamation plan in hand before we can approve it. So I just, that's how I came up with this. But. Okay. Vote. You get a vote to move on. Move on. All in favor? All not. What do you want? It's in your hands now. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up would be best practical location application submitted by Brian and Sandra Perry, 668 13th Street, map 143, lot 34. Application to resist a replace an existing 10 by 12 boat shed located 13 inches from the high water line.
Um, let's do this through the plot plan first. That's the applicant to explain. Yes. Could you explain the uh, project that you want to have done? Yeah, so um, we have an open permit to replace that shoreline wall. So it's made up of uh, three layers. There's one that's near the water's edge, and uh, Matt Colton's doing that one. He's two-thirds of the way through. So, he's, he, so he has the shoreline wall, and then there's two walls up. When he did that, there was an existing shed of that same dimension that he could not, it was sitting on one of those walls and he couldn't do the work with that shed there. And so I'm asking to have that shed replaced in its previous uh, size and location. And um, also in the same, the stairs are, he's taken the stairs out because they go over the walls. So my plan is to replace the stairs all the way up to the top. There's generally about 85 stairs from the water all the way up to the top property. So this is the greatest practical extent. So what I viewed from my site visit for the greatest practical extent is by looking at this plot plan. Sorry. Sorry. Yep, that's okay. If you look at the plot plan in the in the set of stairs that go down over that go down over this grade, you can you can tell that it's very very steep, very steep, and the small section where the retaining wall is actually being built is pretty much the only flat area between between the water's edge and the deck area at the top, on top of the hill at the camp. It's pretty much vertical it's like 50 percent grade so i guess the board's the, go, the board's position at this point is to determine if this shed is at the greatest practical extent or was at the greatest practical extent prior to removal do you want to go and i just have a question as to did you use boats to remove and bring in new water or did you go up and down the stairs well we have we have boats down so this picture to the right shows that the grade so we have boats down at the lower level but it's so far away from the house you have life jackets paddles everything you know that requires to go with those boats is in the shit locked in the shed and secured there's only so much you can secure on the shoreline and taking the boats up and down Oh, I'm talking about the lumber for um, demoing the shed and rebuilding it, the lumber itself. I was just wondering no, was how it was no, no, maneuvered. Barge. So the barge, so Matt has a barge, that's how it went out. Yeah. And it's going to come, um, I actually, yeah. uh, Country Style Sheds and Shapley is agreed to do the work. And what Matt will do is deliver the materials in the shed via barge, and they'll drop it in that way. It's the same size shed? Yes. I see no reason to change where it is myself. Motion. Motion. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the application submitted by Brian and Sandra Perry, 668 13th Street, Map 143, Lot. 34 to replace the existing 6x12 shed in the same location. I got it. Yeah, it was a typo. It's actually 10x12. All right. Sorry. 10x12. I'll change my motion. All right. Second. I second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up would be best practical location application submitted by Sun January. Yeah. Uh, 
1052 West Shore Drive, map, block, map 123, block 30. Application to de demo yeah, existing you? storage <laughs> building to incorporate it into the square footage of the garage. Hey, this is Sean Woods. Uh, construction hired here with Sattery to perform the work here on site. Um, we currently have a shed, if you can see it to the, uh, I'm going to call it the... You get your panel over there, guy. Is right, it right, on your, right, on, right on your left side. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is the shed that we're in question with right now. Uh, it is existing. We are currently uh, anticipating to tear it down to consolidate it into what will be a new footprint of a new dwelling in this vicinity right here. Uh, we're hoping to utilize that footprint uh, as part of the new structure. But currently, we have some, I guess we'll call them setbacks with this utility line pole here. That's illustrated with an overhead line that comes down through here. That's causing a little bit of restriction. But uh, we're just looking to get the advice from the board as to it's best practical location and see where you guys find it best placed. So what you want to do is, is tear down the shed and use that square footage as part of your 30% expansion for your garage. That's correct, yeah. Some of the shed is outside of the 100 feet. This sure. dotted line right here is illustrating. So about 40% yep. is in the 100 foot mark and about 60, I would say, is out. Um, but we're 100 is the, is the pinkish, the purple line. I'm sorry, mistaken. Yes, I was, that's yeah. the building envelope, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, this right here is the 100 foot. Yeah. My, my apologies. So personally, I'm blind with it. <laughs> uh -huh. So are you incorporating it with the garage on the left of the picture or the dwelling on the right? So this was previous planning board. I don't know if you recall this one, Gavin. We, uh, we had, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah, so that structure has now been removed. We have excavated out the trees that you show illustrated. Uh, upon some further discussions with Mike about uh, our volumes and what we were looking to utilize, we've now decided to shift the anticipated new structure's footprint back to this location here and take happen. advantage of this space as well, because this shed is in, uh, it's rotting from the ground up and it's in dire need of replacement. Uh, so we're hoping to re renovate that and utilize that as part of the new structure. Or, or as a garage. Yeah, correct. And it may or may not be connected to the existing dwelling. We're still in the process of conceptual drawings for that at the moment. I can't, I think it would have to be attached, wouldn't it, if it was part of the 30% of the house? Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, you could have it, I suppose you could have an attached garage, but it, I don't, yeah. I think, okay. It's my understanding that, I mean, depending on where you guys put the, this high, you know, the setback from the waterfront, which I think we have at 89.9, .9, uh, that as long as wherever you set the new footprint for that, then we can still utilize that square footage within this vicinity, right in this area. Um, but that's, I think, something that we'll determine once you guys give us a high water setback to work within, based on that, this structure right here. And we gave you 45 feet last time. On the, on the main house. On the main, cause, yeah, exactly, because we had originally 27, I believe. Yeah. We pushed it back to this. This is the 45-foot setback that you see here. Yeah. Uh, so we're, this is the envelope that we are working within. This dotted line right here represents an easement for the utility line that comes through here. Uh, there's a 15-foot easement to the left and right. I think as long as you don't encroach on that 45 feet, we already... Uh, prescribed, we're pretty happy. Unless, unless uh, Mike has something. Nope. I'm okay with that. Like I said, I was fine with it. Motion. Motion. I make a motion. We approve the application submitted by San Sandri Tavana. 1052 West Shore Drive, map block 
map 123, lot 30, to demo existing storage building to incorporate into the square footage of the garage. And that was the only part that confused me. I thought we right. were talking about be the garage house. to the left. Sorry, it should that. be in the house. Yeah. So maybe we should word it. Maybe make sure that it is house, not garage. Correct. Just just for your sake, too. Okay. Go ahead, Gavin. You made the motion. No, that is the motion, Dennis. You're all. Your motion was wrong. Go I second Dennis's motion. Just change the word garage to house. Exactly. All right. On the view. Unanimous. I, I really wish. Honestly, that some other people would make some of these motions so it doesn't look like I'm trying to run the planning board meeting. <laughs> You're doing fine, Dennis. Wow. Well, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> You're the only one. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Well, you know. Stuff going on. Uh, that would be best practical location application submitted by Mary Miller, 9 Rush Road, map 126, lot 16. Application to de demo existing home and rebuild within 30% allowable expansion. Yeah, no, no, no. Yes, good afternoon. Scott McLeod, Ashgrove Construction. I'm representing Mary Miller for this proposed relocation of rebuilding of a uh, camp over on Square Pond. And the packet, as you can see, we have, we've got a proposed location for the new structure. Um, be on page A0.1. Sure, which one you have up there. Of course, it's a good one. Nailed it. There you go. So, across this, you can see uh, our setbacks. Get myself oriented as well. Hundred foot mark proposed location. Actually, maybe better to go to. A0.3, you can see it quite a bit better, I think. Yep, yeah, here we go. So this is the 100 foot setback for the new structure location. Looking to pull the structure back. The old one that's existing, which I'm not sure, did I give you a copy of the old existing structure? Do you have a layer of that where it shows related to that 100 foot mark? This one. It's just not very clear, I'm sorry. Yeah, so here's, here's the old structure here. And the 100 foot mark, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is this line right here. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you can see some pretty steep grades up behind where we're proposing to pull the structure back. Um, it's, it's really because of grading. The design and the plan has been worked through. I kind of came into this project a little bit in the middle, I've, I wasn't part of what they've done in locating, mm -hmm. but I have walked and checked it out and it's short, short of where you wouldn't want the home, down here close to the water, this is the flattest area. The rest of it's all in grade and they've stepped the home up into the hillside to try to make it work out and the foundation would act as its retaining wall, just trying to pull that structure back and get away from the water. That's very steep in there. It is. Very, very steep. So what are the numbers we're looking at? Existing setback from the lake and proposed setback? Yeah, so our existing setback number here. That's what I'm looking at. This drawing is not. Some glasses? Hmm. Pretty small. Can you zoom on there? There's a 65, 65 feet too. Right, but that's a new, that's that's a new the that's, project, that's projected. This is the existing. Yeah, right. Put it in 65. Four. 
Yeah. You say the foundation's in the bank and already. Feet too. I'm sorry? The foundation is already in the, the foundation bank. presently, it's on post and piers and stuff, and it's up against the bottom of the hillside. Yeah. Now we'd be coming into the bank, pulling the house back, and utilizing the foundation of the house. How much more if you want to move it back? Um, that, how much farther are we pulling it back? Yeah. Uh, no, we're anywhere from. It's blurry now, huh? I think it says 55. Can't be too far. It, well, we're actually pulled it, try to pull it back from his existing. I'm just, I don't remember, Dennis. I'm trying I think to find it's 55. out here. 55. My plan. I can't be certain. I'm sorry? I think it's 55, but I can't be certain. I, I need, need some cheetahs. Yeah. <laughs> Want these, Mike? <laughs> Well, only, only well, well, this is five, two. So what? What is the trunk? What was the reality? Oh yeah, that works. Keep impressed with me, dude. This this map here is proposed. Which page? Which map is that? A the second one. A zero one. Yes. A zero one. That is the proposed yeah. location of the structure. All right, that's okay, correct. So positive. You can't see over the other we side of the room. Need a map of where it is now. <laughs> It's 55 to 65. Where the proposed is, and now it's 45. So that can we zoom in on that at all? Because that is the, that is the old right there. Yeah, it gets blurry. It gets, it gets blurry. blurry because there is a number on that. 50. I believe it's 55. Where is that? It's you can barely see it off to the right, left, Gavin. It's not gonna get. I mean, it's left. line from the deck to the shore, but I don't. Yep, see it. it is. It looks like it's right in the th like third or fourth layer of the topo. Uh huh. Is well, this something that says something about a birch tree? Can't <laughs> you read right there? See if I can, I'll see if I can pull it up on something here so I can read it. There's a closer tree. Pine tree, right? Yep. Yeah, it looks like two little. We got 20 inch pine tree, 10 inch birch tree. 14 inch pine tree. Apparent beach area. The scale on the bottom that I was looking at, like 60 per inch maybe. Okay, so, all right. So right now they're pulling the proposed, they're moving the front corner of the home. Let me see which page I'm looking at because I'm able to pull it up here. So if you don't mind going back to A0.1. And the location on the deck right here is, uh, this is the old deck, this number here is representative of the new, this porch here, the steps coming down off the front of the house. That point is 65 feet to here. This is the old structure here in front. The, you can see the old part of the home. So you can see what they've taken the house and try to pull it back from the water. So the distance presently, let me see if I can see that number right there. 65. Well, the 65, Dennis, is, that's actually the new. The yeah. old is 45 feet. 45. So what you're looking at is you're looking at best practical location of no closer than 65 feet of the water. That's correct. From 45, and I, I can actually, if you want to touch my phone, you can actually see <laughs> much better where you can zoom in and see that number. Oh, I see it. Fine, huh? This number here is 45. That's 65. So yep. front corner of existing is 45. New is 65, and it's right there. This here is representative of the old house. It's kind of blurry so it's hard to see it looks like one big house but actually it's sitting right on top of part of the old sure. yeah, mr. chair yeah. is, is the did, did you have to cut into that grade to locate the house that way or is it located it looks like from here it's almost over it's cutting into the, the grade of that and going up in steps as it goes up the hillside okay if we go to page a 0 0.2 do you have that Page in, on site. Uh, 
have it in a larger format if you want to pass it around. I have all your plans Okay. Oh, yeah, so you have a full size. Yeah, that'll be a lot easier to see. She is so good, <laughs> I tell you. What a good son. Oh, you probably can read the 65 and 45 yeah, on that one. I read that on this one. <laughs> Want my glasses back? Huh? No, I think I can read Probably this so. one. I'm in good shape now. All right, put that down. Number two. Oh, I wrote the other one. I think this is the elevation that he was referring to. Can everybody see this side? Yes, and that, that point right there is the 65 feet. The rest of it goes into the hillside, so we're definitely excavating into the hillside to get that home in there. But this, the old house is roughly, would be out here around 45 feet, and we're at 65 here. And then pulling the rest, and you can see how it goes up the grade, yeah. or into the hillside, if you will. See? I'm fine with everything. You're gonna have to do it again, Dennis. All right. I'm getting the glasses back on. I'm putting it in. You don't want <laughs> Let's see. Let's... I make a motion to approve the application. Patient submitted by Mary Miller, 9 Thrust Road, Map 126, Lot 16, to demo the existing home and rebuild within 30%, no closer than 65 feet from the high water mark. How they do? Man. Good. All right. Second. A second. That's what. Any discussion on this? Or? Um, I, not much. Just I think we're. It would be great to have a diagram in the future of just the old, the existing house, because that's what we're supposed to be looking at. It's confusing when they put the proposed on there. Um, but uh, other than that, no. Nope. Alden. Uh favor of approving the motion. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I need just a short break. Okay. Here you go. Yeah, I mean, if the thing is, it's like <laughs> yesterday morning I thought we had a public hearing. You know, it's, we're supposed to have these materials two weeks ahead of time, so I have time to review them. You know, some people choose not to review them, but that was kind of, you know, that was a lot to do in a short period of time. I think we're you know? trying to work that way, but we're trying to get caught up. No, I'm not blaming the land use office. I'm saying that the applicant should be dealing with the fact that they can't just push it through all of a sudden. Well, I think that I was talking about that. No, I know the land use office got the material sooner than that. You need to change the submission date to obviously more than 15 days. Yeah, it'd be very helpful to get submissions in a week earlier to have a little more time with them before they get to this venue so that things are a little more on the land use and on the board side. Right. Is that the ordinance change or can we administer uh, in there somewhere that we're supposed to have it ahead of time. I just don't I just didn't put my we, we need eyes to, on it. to look at it. And, and Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think um, Hey Mike. Okay. Chris, do you need me to stick around for the MMA training discussion or anything? Okay. Maybe I'll I'll sneak away while Yeah. Well, we're having an intermission. Thank you, Ben. All Thank right. you, Ben. Nice seeing you.
socks in. I'll let you know this thing. Thanks. Yeah, I hope the rugs aren't freezing up yet. Um, soup dog? Yeah. Good night. Uh, good night. the bylaws. Ask if everybody's seen the bylaws. Uh, Should I ask questions tonight? She is. Oh. He's in um, Actually, do you want to just ask? Can we move with yeah. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah. Zena, she's instead of her waiting any longer. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, would you like to come up to the... So I recently purchased a home where I'm living on Route 109, and I was interested, I have like 12 acres there, to maybe um, put like a cold storage, like, cell, like storage units that people could store stuff, the mini storage over there. And when I went to the code enforcement to find out about it, it's not in the ordinances that the use would be allowed, so I was just curious of that would be something that would be possible. And I saw there's a storage unit right down the road from the town hall as well. The self-storage, or easy storage, I think is what it's called. Right. And that, if I can, Mr. Chairman, yeah, that, that may be part of the conversation that we had about the 2,500 square feet. That, that building could likely be under 2,500 oh, okay. square feet, and yeah. that's why it was allowed. Um, and this is the reason why I asked Gazina to come in is because this is the third or fourth inquiry that I have had about self storage units. I don't know if it's something that the town of Acton wants to move towards, but as long as it's under 2,500 squ square feet, it could be used as like a, as an other type of commercial usage in certain zones. My one that. is down here. Um, was put in before the restrictions were put in and we also have another one up to Young's Ridge yeah. mm -hmm. uh, that one might have been done after the restrictions were put in uh, I, I don't know I wasn't on the board at the time mm -hmm. uh, I'm just talking my opinion we, we've had we, we, we allow commercial in residential areas. To me, the goal, what's in best interest for the town is to keep as much business on 109 as we can. Uh, first off, it's a cost savings to the town because uh, we're not repairing the roads that people are driving up and down the state is. Um, and I think our town's full of small businesses, mm -hmm. and I think that it's something personally that we should encourage. Okay. What is the proposed size of your structure? Um, so I'm in the early stages to even find out if that was an option. I don't have plans and stuff yet because I wasn't sure if I would be allowed to move forward with that, like mini storage, and I wasn't sure if I was gonna have, I wanted to make it appealing it would be accessible from 109 make it like nice looking that it's you know nice either i thought about maybe shipping containers to either split up inside so you have different sections for a mini storage depending on what sizes or have a metal building built that people could store you know whatever just self storage or cold storage storage like that I was just going to point out, I didn't know if you were aware that the, the planning board's putting forward um, an amendment to the zoning ordinance to include the construction of storage buildings. Um, what we're putting forward is storage buildings not exceeding 5,000 square feet. So I'm pretty sure it would apply to what, what square doing. footage did you say? Not exceeding 5,000. Oh, okay, yeah. So okay. if you're under 5,000, which it seemed like. I didn't know that that you this, guys are working on this that. document we're putting forward seems like um, so, so that is in that's in for the next vote then get yeah, for a town meeting that was one yeah, of the ones just we just putting approved. it out there that um, it's on the radar of the town and that um, it would be sensible perhaps to look at your application as a conditional use because that's what it would be if this thing yes. was to be voted in um, but then I would say that you want to get the ball rolling and, and get your conditional use before town meeting. Yeah. I can hustle. That's what I would do. Then you don't have to take the chance. Okay. That's what I would do myself. 
does that make sense to everyone that it would be a conditional use <coughs> in this case? Yeah. I mean, just since it's not in the ordinance, we, yeah. we don't know what it would be. Mm -hmm. But, okay, yeah. You never know what town meeting's going to That would work for me. So just to make sure, so get everything in order and lined up, like plans drawn up and stuff, and then go to the code's office to um, put in the application for that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what he just read, or is that mixed in with some of the planning board articles? Is it, they're all going to be individualized, I believe. Yeah, yeah just meet with Mike and okay. Christina, and they'll... Yeah, Mike had encouraged me to come tonight, because, yeah. you know, to try to figure out how would I go about it. He'll stay in the right direction. Yay. Okay. Thank you. I would just encourage sooner than later. Okay. I will hustle. Good Have a wonderful evening. Good, Good to see you, too. Drive safe. Bye. One, two. I don't know if we're supposed to give that advice or not, but. I say a lot of things I'm not supposed to say. So well, we'll get our application going and get her in the queue before June, right? But anybody would do. I would hope. Yep. Yep. We do a election of the executive secretary. Yes. You want to explain that, Mike? <laughs> what the executive secretary really is? Not, not really, but I will, I suppose. <laughs> Does everybody have a copy of these bylaws? Well, actually, I'm looking for it now. It might have been well, given well, in the well, packet, right? Well, I guess shut up, then. To ask Mike to do it. Oh, you can do it. <laughs> Explain it, then. You know. Well, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the planning board itself has to have a secretary, uh, elect a secretary that's part of the planning board. That's the executive secretary. Now, the exact responsibilities of this, I don't know because I... Thank you, Christina. <laughs> Christine, it was nice enough to give it to me. The so executive secretary shall be responsible for approval of all information, including but not limited to conditions set when issuing permits before the recording secretary types the minutes and signing the planning board minutes after acceptance as is or with corrections. So what that executive secretary really does is, is, I know one thing, if we have a site visit, they gotta record uh, whoever's at the, the site visit. That's one of their responsibilities. And then you work with Christina to make sure everything is the way it was supposed to be. So when the minutes come to this meeting, um, they're accurate and, and there isn't poor Christina trying to figure out what Dennis Long said at the meeting is more than one person. Because <laughs> sometimes it's kind of hot. Jim knows. Uh -huh. I always go around in circles. You tell you. So basically that's it, but it has to be a, uh, some member of the board. <laughs> can, can it be an alternate member? <laughs> yes. Yes, because Donovan was. So it's ha it happened it, in recent it, we, history? In past practice, it, okay. it can be an alternate member. Okay. This says that the chair and the vice chair shall be full members, but it's silent on whether the executive secretary has to be a part of the board. Well, that's what I said, past practice. We have had uh, alternate members, uh, the secretary. Donovan was the last time we had a secretary, Gavin. Yeah, yeah. And he was an alternate. Yeah. But we, and the, and the duties are actually less than they used to be because they often send the camera person with us on the site walks now. Well, now they started doing that. So, I mean, but I think have, you still you have still to. still take minutes, but there is some recording. I, I, I think you still have to, by law, record who's at a site visit and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't have to take quite as detailed the minutes because we have to. No, no, just who was there, usually. Yeah. yeah. That's how it's been. Yeah. And the, and the executive secretary runs the meeting or opens the meeting if the chair and the vice chair are absent. Yeah. Uh, we've only been through that one time that I know of, but it did happen. And uh, the executive secretary is one that opens the meeting up. Yeah. That sells it, does. <laughs> 
What's that? You said that settles it. You can run a meeting. <laughs> right. So who's going to that? that <laughs> Good for nominations. I'm not doing that. <laughs> no. I love the nominations. No. I got. I got it now. <clears throat> I, I appreciate it, but no. Look for nominations. I nominate Pat. I nominate Dennis. You don't what? She nominated I nominate Dennis. No, 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 I declined. <laughs> <laughs> I declined. Okay, now we're down to John. The other people? Yeah, it's Jim's busy. Well, does Christina get to decline? <laughs> <laughs> That's the member of the board. Well, yeah, that's it. I, yeah, talking, I, mean, I know, I was talking about is, all the Is that the law or is it in the bylaws? That's a bylaw. But it's the, the state law? It is a state law that you're supposed to have three officers. You gotta have a-, a Meaning uh, the vice, the chair, the vice, and the secretary. secretary. All board members. Yeah. And the chair and the vice chair can't be alternate. I personally, I just can't do it. I got too much going on with uh, the other committees and all. Same way, so. Teaching my grandchildren school and Kevin, I can't. We tried. Well, the thing is, I guess that, you know, I mean, myself personally, I mean, Pat declined, but I, I may wouldn't mind nominating Jim. Jim Moore. Crystal. Oh, buddy. <laughs> yeah. He didn't get mine. Give a second. Give a second. No, I, I can't. Huh? I got so much stuff going on right now. It can't be Gavin because he's the vice chair. Yep. Oh, Unless you wanted to step down as vice chair and do it, Gavin. I'm good. You're all set? I'm happy with Vice Chair. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can uh, get a new alternate and ask them. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, ta we'll table it for another month. They would. Well, to our next regular meeting, because our next two meetings are on Zoom, right? And I'd much rather do something. Let me, let me think about it a little bit, just all of a sudden. Well, you know me, I don't like to put you on the spot, Jim. <laughs> we can come back to it. We can come back to it and table it for now. Yeah. And our last item? And our last item is MMA training. Chairman? Yeah. Um, I get a lot of these trainings via email, and I thought that this one is geared, it's very basic training. It's geared for the, both the planning board and the board of appeals for new members specifically. Um, I have got approval from, from the town to fund our training. Um, I just really need a show of hands of how many people would like to go. Um, it's going to be April, uh oh, the 21st, uh, 22nd, I'm sorry. And it's from 4 p.m. to 7.30. And that's also a Zoom meeting from MMA. So they'll be hosting that. How do we sign up, Mike? Raise your hand. So it's not physically <laughs> going to Portland. It's a, it's a Zoom meeting. No, nope, it's a Zoom meeting. You could, we well, could do it from home, do it here, wherever you have capability. I'll do it. Okay. Chair's gonna do it. Three, four. Get it? I'm not sure. I, mean, I have I have done one of that? No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm I'm sorry, I just don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you it's crazy. John, you're you, Yeah. yeah. John's in the gym. So it's just four. Yep. Right? It's just four of us? Yeah. 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 You. Great. You send us a link. Can we just jump into the Zoom? Yeah, yeah. We'll send you. We'll send you a link and all of that. Jennifer's going to set you up with your your <coughs> email. How about? And you'll get the information. Okay. okay. 
I had trouble accessing that last time. I could access it the first time I get into it, but ever since I can't get into it. Yeah, water problems. You're using your so, phone, Pat. Uh, sometimes, yes. I, so, yeah, more than often. More often. Yeah, often. talk to Jen about that because I know past members on the plan yeah, board, the finance committee, it's a Thursday have, again, whatever, it's and it's it's an on week. your phone and do. I think it and fix it. Nice. So, Christina, if you if you uh, wouldn't mind sending it to the other email that I have, so that I don't miss it, I can get the link. Yeah, because she'll she'll do something. She did it with. Uh, we have Taco. everybody's contact, right? So we can just call them if we need. To. One time when I was here, Taco was here doing something, and he, he said he hadn't got the the webmail. Okay. And she took his phone and did something. So we gonna table the election of secretary till the next meeting, or yeah, we'll table the election to the next secretary to the next meeting until well, um, May after the May. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah after the Zoom meeting yeah uh, well we'll table it till May the first meet we can yeah the first meeting in May I know from experience Chris when you do these Zoom meetings it's not the easiest thing in the world yeah that's a, it's not a good time. You know, it can go good, but you can lose people. People go away. They come back, and, and you get a somebody hacks in. Somebody hacks in like the last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't nice. All right. So motion, motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Can I get a second? <laughs> I think that was Gavin. Raise your hand, Jim, before you leave. There you go. Thanks, Jim. Thanks.